I wrote it down here, is this level. It's not in my notes, but a lot of questions they throw that. And I want you guys to write down the word LS. LS is the blood test. They do it for lung maturity in the babies. I don't want to forget, because there are timing that they do say LS for lung maturity for the babies. If LS level, mother is pregnant, 32 weeks, and LS level blood test is one in one or one in two is low. What is normal is here two into one. Are we clear? So this is a normal level. This is low, this is low. Mother is 32 weeks pregnant and LS level one into one or one into two, they're low. Your normal has to be 2.2 into one. If this is low, they give you a question, what do you monitor? Respiratory distress. What does it mean? The lungs are not mature. When you have two into one, then the lungs are mature. And that's why they give the medication for preventing for the lungs problem. So everyone should know LS test is lecithin. is called lecithin sphygmomyelin. S-Y-P-H-A-G. N-O-M-Y-L-I-N-E. L-S, lecithin, sphygmomyelin. Two into one is normal. No lung maturity problem. But one in one, you monitor respiratory distress. So I wrote it down here. I don't want to forget because we do not have in the package. So I added this that we should know that is the lung maturity test. So I was talking about to give them magnesium sulfate to the mother. And what is that sign of toxicity? We talked about the absence DTR, low urine output, and also the third thing I said, low respiratory. You've got to memorize three of them because they may throw one of them in the exam. DTR, we all know, but they love to throw respiratory and urine output. Underneath, I have what changes takes place in the pregnancy for the mother, cardio. If there is a cardiac problem, the mother, what would you be looking for in cardiac? The blood pressure, underline the word blood pressure, going high and increasing for preeclampsia. So cardiovascular means is you are checking the blood pressure and underline the word anemia. Very common, the mother can be anemic and weight gain. So cardiovascular assessment is important, is to monitor the blood pressure for the mother and anemia in pregnancy. And the blood pressure and the edema retaining fluid is sign of your preeclampsia. Number two, shortness of breath. As the mother is increasing advancing pregnancy, it affects the breathing and shortness of breath, respiratory problem, and respiratory rate unchanged, but shortness of breath is there. Number three, GI, nausea and vomiting. We all know during pregnancy, the mother feels nausea and vomiting. Why? Underline the word HCG level is high. Increased level of HCG, human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone is high, and mother feel GI problem. And what is in GI? Nausea and vomiting. End of third month, highlight that word. By end of third month, the mother would have a problem with more in GI would disappear. So by end of third month, the vomiting should be subsiding. So what is a normal? It depends. A lot of mothers, they may have throughout the pregnancy some nausea and vomiting, but normally we consider by end of third month, nausea should be subsiding. Everyone is okay? And what is the reason for nausea is human HCG level is high. So two words is important. HCG level is high. When does it subside? At the end of third month. Mother need to take more vitamins and prenatal vitamin. Not any over-the-counter. Prenatal vitamin is good for the mother and also diet, protein, and prevent them from constipation. 
So constipation is also in GI, the mother has. Some mothers, they feel a lot of constipation. Number four is why, and the next line, hemorrhoids. Some of the mothers have hemorrhoids problem because of constipation. Underline the word gallbladder, gallstone can also be a problem in GI and also why the level of progesterone is high. So the high progesterone level, high HCG level is affecting nausea and vomiting and mother may have gallstone, constipation, hemorrhoids are common. Number four is the renal system. <coughs> what happened in the renal, the mother changes. Frequency of urination. Mother has frequency of <coughs> urination and underline in renal number four, one and third trimester. When is common mother field frequency of urination is normal. First trimester and second trimester. Why first trimester? Write down the word hormonal changes because of the hormones. Why in third trimester? Because the fetus is getting bigger and pushing the pressure. So enlarged babies are getting enlarged and causing pressure. So first trimester, hormonal changes. Third trimester, pressure. But not in second trimester. Make sure when they give you a question and they're saying mother is in second trimester, you must know what are the weeks of second trimester. And they're saying mother is having frequency of urination. What do you do? Urine for culture. Why? Because second trimester frequency is not normal. What are you monitoring in second trimester is sign of UTI. Are we clear? So which is normal here? First and third trimester. Second trimester may be sign of UTI. So second trimester is not normal. You got to maybe monitor for is UTI. So write down two words, first and third normal. Endocrine gland. What gland is more affected? BMR. What gland is affecting BMR? Thyroid gland. So what happened? What is BMR? Basal metabolic rate. You're energizing more because the baby. And every food they're eating, it metabolizes faster. And what gland is affecting your BMR? Your thyroid gland. Are we clear? So what is thyroid gland is affected more and increasing BMR. What does it increase? Base cell metabolic rate is increased. And that's why the mother need more calories. The BMR is high and the baby is there. And what gland is affected? Thyroid gland. Reproductive system. The uterus was 60 gram and now is 1,000 gram. The weight of the uterus is changing. Breast, from the breast, the milk, the call is, the first word is called cholesterol. And as number eight is changes on the skin is called linea niagara, the dark lining in the middle of the abdomen. Colasma word is mask of pregnancy on the face or hyperpigmentation of, on the face and the cheek. A stretch mark on the abdomen and the thigh. Now knowing wording, it helps you in the exam. So make sure we all know the colostrum is the from the breast milk and liana nigra is the uh, mark on the, on the abdomen. Colasma is the pigmentation and stretch mark is normal. And normal is one to third month of pregnancy frequency. BMR is high. What do you monitor mother for anemia, hypertension, and also you monitor the weight gain. Now some of the discomfort, I have it here. We all know discomfort of pregnancy, but some of the thing, what would you teach the mother? Number one, nausea and vomiting, I said why? Because increasing Hume HCG level. What is the best when mother has uh, is nausea and vomiting? Is avoid brushing early morning and avoid fried food and spicy food. That is causing more nausea and vomiting. So brushing you avoid fried food and spicy food, we avoid them in nausea and vomiting. Number two, syncope means is dizziness. Syncope means dizziness, underline the word, is common. After first trimester, 
and causing during more second and third trimester? And what would does it cause hypotension? And what would you do when mother has this? Is elevate feet is okay? The best is second line, turn the mother on the left side or lateral position. So what do you do for syncope questions are? Turn the mother on lateral recumbent or left position and why? Because it relieved the pressure on, underline the word, inferior vena cava. Syncope is dizziness and dizziness cause hypotension. Turn the mother on the left side and why? To relieve the pressure on inferior vena cava. Next is number three. Correct here, one, not second, and third, make third there, is normal. Is frequency is normal when first and third. At their second trimester, monitor for UTI. And what do you do when mother has normal frequency of urination is Kegel exercise and increase fluid. And when do you increase fluid? Always, all your patients early in the morning, but don't drink a lot of water late in the night because you will get up more for urination. Number four is vaginal discharge. If it increase and showing infection, should be notified, no dosh during the pregnancy time. Next page, you have number five and is heartburn question. What do you do when mother has heartburn? Second and third trimester. We have heartburn, second and third trimester, and why? Underline the word progesterone level is high. What do you do for heartburn? Eating small, frequent meal. Eat small and frequent meal. Avoid fatty food. Avoid spicy food, sitting upright, and for 30 minutes is good. Milk is good. Sitting, not the toilet, but correct here, tailor sitting position. Tailor, like a tailor, crossing leg. Tailor, not toilet, but tailor sitting position for heartburn. Sitting upright crossing legs, tailor sitting position. See, some of these positions are there in the book, so it's good to know some of your answers. Heartburn, we all know milk would be good. Avoid spicy food and fried food. Number six, ankle edema. If you will see, all of them are normal during second and third trimester. Mother is going to feel these complaints and the problem. Second and third trimester, what do we do if they have ankle edema? Elevate the legs. What are we elevating here? Legs for edema. Avoid crossing. Anybody, crossing of legs are not good. Standing in one position is not good. And sleep on the left side is good. So elevating is good. <clears throat> Sitting and standing, avoid crossing legs. Sleep on the left side is okay. So edema, when you have ankle edema, second and third trimester, is simple measures. You always are looking for nursing measure. Number seven, varicose veins are common, second and third trimester. Walking is good. Support hose, second line. They can wear the TED hose. Elevating is good. Avoid crossing leg and laying with hip and feet elevated. Elevation is good. Moving about, that means if you stand in one feet, your blood is pulling more in the legs. So if you are standing, walking around is good, then you stand on one position. Number eight, hemorrhoids question. Mother has hemorrhoids and that can be causing a lot of congestion on the hemorrhoids. Sits back can be also good. Very important, second line, fiber because mostly your hemorrhoids are from your constipation. So you prevent constipation, give them fiber, give them fluids. If they have a lot of pain, use the soft pillow on the chair for let the mother sit on that. Number nine is leg cramping. Very common in third trimester. 
What is the reason for leg cramping or calcium, low calcium? So what do you increase here? Calcium, I want you to add there the word is your calcium level. Some of you have done a lot of with me, other systems. So you remember I said in parathyroid gland is affecting your calcium. But what happened the mother, the fetus is growing, the bones are affected and low calcium. But whenever you are increasing, either your answer increasing calcium, and what do you decrease here? Phosphorus. Whenever your phosphorus is high, your calcium is low. Now, a lot of questions, they may not say give calcium, but they will answer would be decreasing the phosphorus. Everyone must know calcium and phosphorus and vitamin D. All three are important for your calcium question. We all should know for NCLEX, where are we getting our calcium from parathyroid gland. So what do you decrease here? Phosphorus. And what is very high phosphorus are in carbonated beverages. And I came across a lot of questions and they say cut down carbonated beverages. Carbonated beverages are high in phosphorus. Now, so cut and lower the carbonated drinks. And that was the answer. And some question answer was decreasing phosphorus. But what is really we are doing? We are increasing the calcium level. See, they convert the question, so they want to know really you know all the concept. So everyone, calcium, phosphorus, vitamin D, whenever you get in your question, read good and see what do you cut down here phosphorus you increase calcium and what exercise would be good in the next line walking is good and underline the word dorsiflexion if you really do the question is dorsiflexion of the same leg mother is having cramping in right leg what exercise do you tell the mother do dorsiflexion of the right leg same leg so exercise dorsiflexion, increasing calcium, and decreasing your phosphorus, and decreasing carbonated beverages. Number 10, backache is causing second and third trimester. Baby is growing. They are having a lot of pain. And it causing CURP, underline the word lumbosacral in the back, right here, the lumbar area, sacral area, and why? Because the uterus is getting big, the baby is growing. What would you do here? Again, pelvic rocking exercise and low heeled shoes. A lot of questions are on shoes and rest, low heeled shoes and rest. Number 11, shortness of breath is common at the end when the mother is getting more bigger and third trimester. What exercise for shortness of breath and heartburn? Same, tailor sitting exercise. And elevate the head of the bed. Elevation head of the bed is always good. Fowler's position is good. And also you can go here, tailor sitting. So remember, tailor sitting in two is good. Heartburn and shortness of breath. Now number 12 is very important. What is in number 12 is prenatal visit. You are teaching the mother how frequently she need to come and visit the doctor. So prenatal visit every four weeks or once a month during 28 to 32 weeks. Until the mother is 28 to 32 weeks, she's visiting every four weeks or maybe once a month and until the, that is your first visit. Every four weeks, mother has to go see the doctor until she is 28 to 32 weeks. That is once a month. And then second visit every two weeks. Num number two, Q two weeks is from 32 weeks. And you will go from every prenatal every two weeks from 32 to 36 week. Mother is crossing 36 week would be Q week after 36 to 40 weeks or until she had the baby. So question can be, 
I'm pregnant, how frequently I need to come and see the doctor. This is the normal routine. Unless there's a special test they're going to do, they have to go and visit, get the lab work done, or maybe if they change and maybe some complication. But normally, once a month for 28 to 32 weeks, every two weeks you will go 32 to 36 weeks, and every week, after 36 weeks, mother is going weekly. Everyone should know number 12. And here is the problem with the mother during the pregnancy. Number 13, we already talked about rubella vaccine, but number 13, second line is important for knowing anemia. If they give you a question, hemoglobin below 10 gram and hematocrit below 30 gram is sign of anemia. That's important. So number 12, number 13, for your NCLEX, remember, labs are very important. Everyone should know normal hemoglobin, normal hematocrit, because hematocrit and uh, hemoglobin shows the anemia sign. So number 12 for prenatal visit is good. Number 13, second line for question with anemia. Now the next page is very important that we all need to know some of the tests they do during the pregnancy. I wrote it down earlier, the LS test for the lung maturity, and I said what is a normal LS level is two into one, and I, we added that. Now next page says diagnostic test. In diagnostic test, we all have is alpha fetoprotein screening, AFP test. Alpha fetoprotein test is done when? 16 to 20. This page, you have to know. Everyone, make sure you look through, especially when do you do this test, 16 to 20 weeks. What is alpha fetoprotein is? It's a glucoprotein, and it comes from the fetal yolk. And elevated, associated with neutral tube defect. So why do you do alpha fetoprotein? To know neural defect. That's your answer. So what, what is alpha fetoprotein test? Is a blood test done. Why? To know the neural defect. What are the neural defect? Are spinal bifida and for Down syndrome. So question, alpha fetoprotein test, when do you do it? 16 to 20 weeks. If it is high, you must screen the babies and you must do further testing because it shows that there is abnormalities. So alpha fetoprotein test is what? Done to know glucoprotein of the fetus, which shows, what is it showing here is neural defect. Everyone should know two words yet. Neural defect is important, 16 to 20 weeks, and the last line, spinal bifida and Down syndrome. So that is the test is done, 16 to 20 weeks. Second test is done, we call chorionic villi sample. They're taking the sample from the chorionic villi, eight to 10 weeks, and why? Underline the word genetic abnormalities. Why we are doing here? For genetic abnormalities. What do you tell the mother during the test? Mm -hmm. Fill up the bladder before procedure, because it helped them to do CVS test, see a chorionic villi sample test. What do you monitor after the procedure is bleeding and infection? So what do you monitor after the test is bleeding and infection? So chorionic villi test is done. Why? Underline the word genetic test. Why? When do we do it? 8 to 10 weeks. Kick count is you're checking the baby's kicks. And what do you tell the mother? Sit quietly or lay down on the left side. And when mother feels fetal kick, and notify, you will tell them, if she feels less than a few of 10 kids, or less than 10 kids in 12 hours, she need to notify. So what is mother is counting? How many times she's feeling the baby's kick? If it is less than 10 in 12 hours, she need to notify uh, the, that she's feeling less kick. Amniocentesis, everyone should know. Amniocentesis can be done at 16 weeks. Why do you do it? 
We all know there are other reasons, genetic, you can do sex, but very important, highlight the word lung maturity. Amniocentesis is done to see the baby's lungs maturity. And less than 20 weeks, you can do it 16 weeks, but what do you instruct the mother if you're doing before 20 weeks are, underline the word full bladder. That's your answer. More than 20 weeks, empty the bladder. So full bladder, everyone should know before 16 weeks, and empty bladder after 20 weeks. Position, what position do you put the mother? Underline supine on left side after the test. So when you're doing procedure, she's laying on the supine position. After the test, you can turn her on the left side. Everyone should know the positioning because these are procedure. And if chills and fever for the mother, monitor. So what do you monitor after the amniocentesis? Underline fetal heart rate. You're monitoring the baby, it's okay. Second thing, you monitor the mother. What do you monitor the mother? Fever, that means sign of infection. The last line, you will highlight the word bleeding. Abrupt show placenta and premature rupture of membrane and write down underneath early labor. The meaning is premature rupture of membrane, mother can go in the labor. So make sure we all, the way I'm going over, make sure that's the way you must know for your exam. Amniocentesis before <coughs> 16 weeks are full bladder. After 20 weeks is, or after 16 weeks, empty the bladder. Position supine. Why do you do amniocentesis? Lung maturity, that's important. And what do you monitor after the procedure is done is number one, baby, fetal heart rate, and number two, mother, you're monitoring for sign of infection, bleeding, maybe early labor, or premature rupture of the membrane. Those are very important in your exam question. Everyone, alpha fetoprotein, you should know. And what are you checking? Neural defect, amniocentesis, what time would be done, and what do you monitor after the test? Fine test. What is a fine test to see, underline the word amniotic fluid? What are we checking in fine test are, uh, is amniotic. When mother says membrane rupture, and my fluid is leaking, or fluid is coming out. So you want to confirm that is a amniotic fluid. How do we know that is amniotic fluid is? Is fine test by doing, and it's a sterile technique because membranes are ruptured. You don't want mother to get infection. Very important, sterile. And also you take the fluid from the internal os, that means inside, and you put the fluid on the slide and underline the word microscope. Sometimes in your questions are, how do you check fine test under the microscope? So you have to put the fluid on the slide and you're looking under the microscope and what would you see under the microscope? Like a fine shape a structure and that is the sign that is amniotic fluid. Underline fine-like structures result from salt of amniotic fluid and that confirms the mother has ruptured the membrane and position is lithotomy position. Highlight that word. All your questions are positioning. When you do this, number one, we all know lithotomy position. Number two, you're taking the fluid. And how do you check this? Under the microscope. And what are you confirming here? Amniotic fluid. Now, nitrosin test. And you tell the mother to cough, instruction, that's okay. Nitrosin test. First thing is, what is the pH of amniotic fluid? 7.0 to 7.5 is the pH of the stomach uh, for the fluid. Now, what is the test is nitrazine test. Changes the strip color and blue color, underline that, 
And what position do you do? Lithotomy position. And assess the test tape, and the color will cha change into blue, or blue-gray, or deep blue color. Non-stress test, that's also important. What is a non-stress test are, is you are checking. Why do you do non-stress test? So this is called non another test, non-stress test. Why do we do non-stress test? Your main answer is here, to check, underline the word after evaluate. What are you evaluating? Fetal heart rate in fetal movement. So when babies, heart rate. So what are we monitoring? Fetal heart rate when the baby is moving. So what is this test is? You're monitoring when baby is moving, what is the fetal heart rate is. Are we clear? So what is this non-stress test? You are evaluating who we are evaluating, the baby. And when are you evaluating the baby? The fetal heart rate in response to fetal movement. So when baby is moving, we are checking how is the fetal heart rate and how do you do it? Is underline the word second line. Ultrasound, external. So they are checking outside, nothing inside, and we are checking external transducer. Anything you are assessing fetal heart rate, you are attaching outside. And toco dynamometer are applied to the mother. So they are applying the transducer and tocodynamometer to check the fetal heart rate. And tracing, like the heartbeat, they're tracing, underline, 20 minutes duration. And fetal heart rate and uterine activity can be obtained. And what do you check during the test? Blood pressure. And monitor the mother. Position the mother is important. What is the position? Underline left lateral to avoid vena cava compression. So mother is in what position here? Is left lateral. Your question is, what would you tell the mother during the test? Next line. Mother may be asked. What do you tell the mother? Now this is your answer. Press the button every time when she feels the baby is moving. So what does the mother do here? When fetal movement mother is feeling, she press the button. So remember, what is a non-stress test? You are checking the baby, and what is the, how much is the fetal heart rate when the fetal movement is there? So they attach the transducer, and mother, when she feels baby is moving, she press the button. That means they will check the how the baby's heartbeats are. Are we clear? So that's your test and a lot of questions they throw on this one. And what do you tell the mother? Your answer would be you tell the mother is to press the button when she's feeling the baby is moving. What position do you put the mother here is on left lateral position. Mother may be asked to press the button every time when the baby. Three words is very important. What is a non-stress test? Everyone can answer. What is a non-stress test? You are assessing fetal heart rate in response to fetal movement. And what do you tell the mother? When baby is moving, what does she do? She press the button. Now, let next page, we'll move on. And what are the two answers here? are reactive and non-reactive. So when they're saying reactive, means underline the word normal. If the answer is reactive means is normal, and what is reactive means normal, the baby is healthy, baby is okay. And result is fetal heart rate, underline the word acceleration, 15 minutes and lasting 15 seconds. So there's a changes in the fetal heart rate, 15 beats per 15 second duration. So those are, remember, in your answer, normal means is, uh, reactive means normal and is negative. There's no problem. Remember the word 15 beats acceleration and duration is 15. Both answer 15, normal. And non-reactive means abnormal. So reactive means normal, 
baby is okay non reactive means abnormal and here underline the word less than 15 beats or lasting more than 15 seconds and duration during 40 minutes so you are checking 40 minutes less than 15 minutes or lasting longer lasting than 15 seconds number 3 unsatisfactory means bad so when you are reading the result they are saying reactive reactive means normal non reactive means abnormal unsatisfactory means is bad now i will move on a little bit on nutrition so everyone you are going for your exam make sure you review make sure you know all these tests for your exam next is nutrition question what is the nutrition for the pregnancy for the mother during pregnancy we should know how much the weight gain is normal 25 to 35 pounds so underline that 25 to 35 pounds is normal increase how many calories during pregnancy you can give 300 calories 500 during lactation when mother is feeding the baby breastfeeding lactation is 500 calories we all should know 300 calories 500 calories increase first trimester is important in the first three months mother should take folic acid why do you give folic acid to prevent the mother from the neural defect everyone should know prevent what defect neural defect and they have seen since mother start taking folic acid is cutting down a lot of abnormalities in the baby so you give uh, is folic acid so remember in your question you're not giving after three months you've got to give before the baby start developing so when do we give folic acid in first trimester early period you should give how much mother should take the fluids eight to ten glasses four to six are your water add their three to four glasses are milk how much milk mother should have three to four glasses so that milk she should drink and mother needs more calcium and three to four glasses in there how do you give uh, if mother doesn't like milk then what do you give the mother is remember is non-dairy product you will give them <coughs> green leafy vegetables are good for calcium so write down there green leafy vegetables someone who don't like milk increase their vegetables and green leafy vegetables are good for calcium and how much is your calcium should be increasing in the mothers is three one thousand three hundred mg per day is your calcium so three one thousand three hundred mg per day is for calcium okay and non-dairy product you can give them and also the word under nutrition is p covered craving when mother is having craving we all know craving goes and what does the craving can lead to underline the word iron deficiency anemia mother who are craving and they're eating maybe a clay or starch or what what do you monitor anemia so everyone nutrition question weight gain question is important and what how many calories per pregnant you know, mother should increase 300 to 500 calories 500 you give to the mother when she is lactating so we covered that part now i will go on hiv question hiv human uh, deficiency virus and azt is the medication underlined for hiv what medication they can give to the mother during pregnancy is called sudafedine azt underline maternal prevention of maternal and fetal hiv transmission you can give oral after 14 weeks underline so mother can get during pregnancy any question mother has hiv can you give them medication yes and you give them azt and orally after 14 weeks and iv during labor and in the babies you can give them the syrup 
for four weeks. Neonate means the newborn baby can be given through the syrup. So we all know AZT is treatment for HIV. <laughs> Diagnosis, when you are diagnosing, and I want you to write down the word, is ELSA test cannot be used for HIV follow-up test. What is the best test? It is a test, but what is the best to confirm HIV? Underline the word Western blot, an IFA test, which is called indirect fluorescent antibodies. Positive Western blot, or IFA, consider confirm diagnosis for HIV. Now, ELSA is a test, but to confirm what is your best answer would be Western blot and IFA. <coughs> ELSA fails to confirm Western blot, IFA. It should not be considered negative. You repeat again after three to six months. Now, neonate, when the babies are born with the mother HIV, they can room in, they can stay with the baby mother, but what is your restricting here? Breastfeeding, underline the word breast. Rooming in means they can stay with the mother, but what do you restrict here is the breastfeeding. HIV babies, you can give all immunization. What do you give them? Immunization, and but no live vaccine. Highlight that one. Anybody with immune deficiency problem or immune system problem are, you do not give them live vaccine. You can give other regular vaccination. Risk for HIV infection should visit physician every once a week, then twice a week, then every month, and then every uh, then two months, four months, and monitor the mother. We already talked about anemia. We did already on the other page. Now, I want you to write down, if you have T cell, T cells are the low. I want you to add there, T cells are less than 200, less than T cells are 200, then you monitor the mother for, and their risk for, opportunist infection. Remember, they're very much infection they can get. They're opportunist infection. And what are the common infection if their T cells are low, less than 200? Infection are common with HIV. Entrocolitis, stomach problem like diarrhea. Entrocolitis, cyto Megalus virus. Remember, cytomegalus virus. Megalus virus. Okay, cytomegalus virus. And also, they have infection, cytoendrocolitis, and they can also have, which is called K A P O S I C, Kaposki's sarcoma like a cancer. These are very common with opportunities infection. And enterocolitis, cytomegalus virus, copastis sarcoma, that's like a cancer, they can leak if the T cells are low. And very remember, your HIV people are risk for getting opportunities infection. How do you know AZT is working is they have to do, it's called viral load test. So I want you that add there, how do you see AZT is working? And they do, is called viral load test. That's a blood test, viral load test. And T cell, if they're less than 200, the risk for getting infection. And what are the common infection they can have? Entrocolitis, cytomegalus virus, and sarcoma. So uh, those are some of the things you always need to know. AZT, when you're giving viral load test, you will see T cell less than 200, the risk for infection, okay? Now, I will move on a little bit on diabetic mother. 
Mother is diabetic, diabetes mellitus question. When mother is diabetic, what do you, what happened to the babies and the mother? Number one, you are treating the mother who is already diabetic by giving insulin. In your question with insulin, diabetic we all know, and if mother is already diabetic, you must screen all the mother for diabetes. I will be talking about that. But when mother is diabetic, how much insulin do we give the mother? And so it says under the first trimester. First trimester, maternal insulin need to be, underline the word, decrease. First trimester, you decrease insulin. She don't need more insulin. Second and third trimester, increase. And after placenta, that means baby is born, placenta is out, again decrease. So what do you monitor the mother after she had a baby? Hypoglycemia. Are we clear? And the insulin need would be also decreasing and monitor for their sugar level and decreasing the requirement because the baby is out, you don't want to give the same insulin, you check the blood sugar. Are we clear? So everyone should know how do you treat the diabetic mothers are by insulin. You do not give oral tablet. And what happened when mother is pregnant and first trimester your insulin need would be low, second and third trimester increasing when the babies are born is decreasing. What do you monitor the babies who are born from the diabetic mother? This is wrong, hyper, correct here, hypoglycemia. And, I, and highlight the word hypocalcemia. Highlight the word respiratory distress. So the mother is diabetic. What is the problem with the mother? The babies are here. You monitor the babies, they have low sugar. So immediately you are checking their blood sugar. So their sugar level is low, calcium is low. That's very important. And what does it cause when you have low sugar and low calcium? Some of your question, I want you to add the word jitteriness. They become very jittery, shaking. So write down this word. Because of low calcium, they are jittery and they can go in convulsion. And also you monitor for respiratory distress. So what are other problems? These are low. But what are the other problems are? Respiratory distress and congenital abnormalities. Babies who are born from diabetic mother could be a risk for congenital deformity and the babies are always bigger. That means the weight gain is there, maybe 10 pounds, 9 pounds over. So diabetic mother, babies are larger, number one. Respiratory distress, congenital, we all should know, hypoglycemia and hypocalcemia and jitrina. Sometimes mother may have to go on C-section because of the babies are big. So everyone, we all know, is the question with the <clears throat> mothers here are for mothers who is diabetic. And let me finish here, then we'll take a quick break, is gestational diabetic mother. Everyone is not diabetic, but when a mother is pregnant, she can turn into going into diabetic problem. <clears throat> that is why all the mother need to be screened. So pregnant women should be screened, all the pregnant mother. And your question, when do you screen? Underline the word 24 to 28 weeks you screen the mother. So question mother is admitted, when do you screen all the mother for being in their diabetes? 24 to 28 weeks is important. How do you treat them if they're diabetic? Only by insulin, no oral medication. Second line, predisposing condition. Which are the mother are risk for predisposing conditions are. What are the predisposing factors are? Older mother, you get pregnant, 40, 45 years. Family member, underline. Family member, history of diabetes. And multiple 
gestation. What is multiple? Maybe twins, triplets you have. Then is the risk for pregnancy. So read your question. Mother is 45 years old or 40 years old and ha having a baby. What are you assessing the mother for diabetes? When do we assess the mother? 24 to 28 weeks. And what are the reason for mother? Mother has multiple pregnancy. Mother is having a triplet. What could be the risk? Maybe diabetic. You must screen all the mother. Data collection. What does it cause when they have is diabetic mother or hypertension? Polyhydria amnius. What is poly means more fluid. What is more fluid? Amniotic fluid. And more amniotic fluid, baby is larger. So what is the biggest problem? You are monitoring the mother who is diabetic. Number one, polyhydramnios. Baby is big. And risk of hypertension. Next is intervention. What do you do? You monitor diabetic mother, you are treating them with the diet, you are giving insulin, but what are you monitoring the mother who is diabetic? Preeclampsia. What are the signs of preeclampsia we are looking? Blood pressure. What are the signs we are looking? Pro edema and protein urea. What is the last complication? You monitor the diabetic mother or bleeding after the baby is born. And what is that condition is called postpartum hemorrhage. Everyone must memorize two and three. Remember, your questions are not going to be, what do you do mother has a diabetic? Question is, when do you screen all the pregnant mother are? Everyone should read that way, 24 to 28 weeks. What is the risk when mother is already Diagnose a diabetic. You monitor sugar, you give insulin, and you're monitoring the weight, you're monitoring edema, and what are you monitoring? Protein urea. Why? The risk for preeclampsia. Remember, all your diabetic mothers are going in preeclampsia. Second complication is postpartum bleeding. Everyone is okay. Which mothers are high risk to have diabetic or is multiple pregnancy, age, and family history? Are we clear? This is the way we got to know your answer. And what is the risk? Everyone, without knowing, without looking, what is we are monitoring the mother who is already is diabetic or she's going to have maybe sign of preeclampsia. You are controlling the blood pressure, you are checking the weight, you are checking protein urea. When you are looking protein urea and you are passing protein through the kidney, risk of seizure. So what happened after preeclampsia? Mother will end up in what? Having seizure. So you are controlling that and what are you assessing after she had a baby is postpartum bleeding. Why? Because the baby size is big, uterus is stretching, and what happened? Contractions are relaxed, and mother lead to bleeding. So I, we will take a break. I will stop here for now, and then we'll continue back.